Yeah. I'm excited as well, Sister Reed. Okay. So now we'll have the opening remarks from our lovely Women's Board Director, Sister Evangelist Reed. Please make her welcome. Thank you so much, Ariel. And uh, good evening, everybody. You know, um, oh, oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. How good and pleasant for us to meet uh, in season three of our women's health. It is so good to have everyone. Uh, you know, God is indeed faithful. God is indeed very good to us. You know, this thing started out of a pandemic, but now look at where we are. Out of evil comes good. I want to, at this moment, just for us to welcome everybody this evening who has made it their your duty to be here you could have done so many other things i know so many things are happening but you choose to be with us and indeed you are welcome and we appreciate it i want to specially acknowledge you know our national bishop bishop carlton holness who is with us our assistant national bishop bishop lorraine mcdermott the members are of the national women's board who are on with us we want to say um welcome and well appreciated to those who have joined us from uh, the united states canada those who have joined us locally um everybody who made it your duty to be here if you're a first timer we want to specially specially welcome you if you're a brother who was join to support and of course with the topic that we have it is relevant to everybody special welcome to you and certainly uh we as our host has said and and you know i just want to thank god for our host you notice this is a very youthful and vibrant young woman so we're expecting that the evening is going to be quite scintillating and we're going to be leaving filled with knowing how to deal with our grief and trauma, whether it is happening now or it has happened. If we never even have experienced it, when it comes, we will know how to manage. Thank you so much, everyone, for making it Women's Health, the premiere of, of season three. Blessings, and I trust that the evening will be of benefit to everyone. Thank you so very much again for making it uh, a date with us. Blessings from God. Thank you so much, Sister Lee, for that. I hope everyone is just as welcome and happy to be here as I am. Okay, so now we'll jump right into praise and worship because we have to first recognize an awesome king that we have who helps us in the most scary points of our lives. And we must, of course, welcome him in. And so we are going to start with some praise and worship. And this will be done by a musical selection. Well, that is being queued up. I will just start by singing a song. Okay, um, you deserve the glory and the honor. No, okay, right on time. Okay, take it away. <laughs> And as you speak, a 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So, God, I will praise you. I will praise you in those scary moments of my life. I will praise you in the most insecure, most vulnerable periods of my life. God, I will praise you when all feels lost. I will praise you when the most dearest person in my life is no longer on her earth. I will praise you when something that someone has said has caused me so much pain. I will praise you when my spirit is feeling low and I really don't know what to do, God. I will praise you. So I will praise you in this moment as I choose to be in a place where I can rediscover myself, God. I will praise you. What a most potent song for such a message that we are trying to bring out this afternoon. So God, I will praise you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And we want to just thank God at this moment for his awesomeness. Because he knows that grief is it's, it's a part of life. It's a part of our nature because honestly, we cannot go through life without nothing happening to us. That is just crazy. I don't know if you can ask your neighbor, your friend, your auntie, your uncle, your sister, or your brother, they're going to tell you, I've gone through some amount of grief. I've gone through some amount of trauma. I've gone through something that has rocked my boat at some point in life. But guess what? So will I praise you. So will I praise you when I don't get that job opportunity. So will I praise you when I've gone through abuse, divorce, all these things. So God, I will praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. At this moment, we're going to be gracing some greetings from our dear Bishop Lorraine McDermott. Please make her welcome. Good evening, daughters of the King. It is indeed a wonderful evening for us to gather together on this platform and of course we are celebrating ourselves to each other god is indeed wonderful and it is god himself who has placed this in the heart of his servant to call us together in a passion like this let us just keep on praising god and giving him thanks for this opportunity which he has given us. And I pray that at the end of this session, our hearts will be blessed. We will be challenged to face all the odds that we're always facing. And I'm saying to us, let us keep that smile in our hearts. Because the word of God says, weeping so may endure for a night, but on. joy comes in the morning. So whatever causes us to be grieving at some point, morning time always come with gladness. So await your morning gladness in the mighty name of Jesus. And I bless the director, bless all the workers and 
all those who are on this platform. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus and stay blessed. Amen. So much, Sister Matt Derma. Thank you so much, our Bishop here. Thank you so much. And now we'll jump right into our brain teasers. So I hope the technicians will let that pop up on the screen momentarily. And I hope I want you guys to prepare your minds and I hope your fingers are ready for this um for this brain teaser because the first person who is going to get is the first person who is going to win. So I want your hands to be at your keyboard right at this moment because this brain teaser is as you see it. You have to get the answers then because the first person that we see is the first person who is going to get it right. So technicians, please have that popping up on the screen at this moment. Are you seeing it? Are you able to see it properly? Hello. Yes, yes, we're seeing it now. Yes. We're seeing it now. Okay. So I want even some assistance in the chat as well to see who is the first person to get it. So in we're starting in five, four, three, two, one. Who's the first person to get it? Get all of them right. Not seeing anybody. Are we thinking? Are we thinking? Are we thinking? I see somebody. No, all right. The thing is, we want all the answers. We don't want just one. So if you can get all the answers, that would be good as well. So not just one coming out, one behind the other. Hmm? And, and what are we supposed to do? You didn't explain it or anything. Okay, okay, so my bad. The images are basically, they, they are basically staying a statement. So for the first one, I'm seeing persons getting the first one right. I will give away the first one right. So the first one you see misunderstood and you see misunderstood, those are basically picture messages. And that is how um, basically all of them are. So if you're able to get all of them, coming down you are you will be the one who will win win tonight so that is what we wanted so not just one um one word because we will overlook the persons who are just picking the one word we want all one two three four five six seven all of them all the answers for all of them so mom, just wait a moment get all the answers and then you put them in one way and the other I know the answer for eight of them because <laughs> I don't understand the last one. Huh? <laughs> I don't understand the Come last on, one. Come on, man. Really? Really good. The last one. Is that a line or something? Hold on. I, 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 I can't tell you. I can't. Sorry, tell Ariel. You. I, I could write everything all at once because I'm using the phone. So I have to look on the screen and then go back in the chat. So my apologies. <laughs> oh, I get. I don't know if you want to get your papers and your pens or write it in your hand middle or have someone help you. I don't know. I don't want anybody to be at an unfair advantage here. But see how best you can um, figure out all of them. So who is the first person? So. Hold on. Okay, so... No, Sister Debbie and Russell, that was not all of them at all. Not all of them. <laughs> Hold on. No, it was not all of them at all. There's some music to stimulate your mind in the moment. Thank you. 
Hold on, let me see. We, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me not talk too quickly. Let me not talk too Can quickly. I try? Oh, sorry. Let me not talk too I quickly. have them, but I want to try. I'm looking, no man, I, I, we're working with the chat because we don't want- No, we can't type fast, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I know them, it's just that I didn't see the last one, sorry. No, Go ahead. No, 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 the microphones will um, kind of cause a disruption a bit. So, Because oh. if, if you use the mic, everyone will want to turn on their microphones and then I can't really hear. But, uh, but Sister Shasha, you have all of them right. Just the last one. Just the last one. I yeah, gave it away. I don't, I can't even see clearly what that is in a, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, That's hold what on. I was saying. I couldn't even see it so good, but may I go try? <laughs> well, mm, can um, I try, Sister Airy? Oh, sister Freeman. You can't type fast. Oh. <laughs> Make Sister Zodi time for you. Not <laughs> where I am. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. Uh, mm, mm. Uh, sister Shasha, you're really right, you know, but it's just the last one, the last one. Still, still warm, still warm. <laughs> so I don't know if, all right, so Sister Shasha got all of them right. So I don't know if someone in the chat can get just the ninth one, the last one, right? Type it quickly in the chat. So you don't have to type out everything. Just get the last one. Last one is not showing properly. It's not showing properly. We have a winner. We have a winner. We have a winner is the winner is the winner is Sister Fran B. <laughs> so the last one was B long. The B, it's, it's stretched out across the screen and the B is long. Get it? Understand? Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. What? Right. So that one was me. Boom, it just seen it. I'm just seeing it. I'm just seeing the bee. I'm just seeing it. I'm not seeing that. I don't see that. It gone. The bee being long. Let's just see it there now. The bee being long. So, yeah. We just seen that because I thought it was two line meeting together. Oh. I didn't see it. That's why I said I can't see the last one. I knew all the others, but I couldn't see the last one. So, mm -hmm. so for good workmanship, okay. let's see some fire emojis and some clap and emojis for Sister Fran B. I don't know who that word is. I think it's a Francine Brooks. It's our youth director, Frankie. <laughs> oh, <I'm> incorrect. <laughs> let's see some good workmanship in the chat. Some, you know, something. So the first one was misunderstood. The second was walking in the park. The third was one in a million. The fourth was looking back. The fifth was you're under arrest. The sixth, the, the sixth one was stand by me. The seventh was walking on thin ice. The eighth one was I see you. I see you understand. And nine, the one that was the most annoying was belong. So me, um, Sister Francine, congratulations, congratulations. Okay, so Sister E, take it away with our, with our, um, with our um, hot seat questions. Take it away, Sister Evangeline. Thank you so much, um, um, Aria. Ladies, the hot seat, or everybody, because I'm sure that there are gentlemen on with us, um, the hot seat is that, can somebody, there are about, six or seven questions that will be asked and 
if you answer them or depending on how many you answer then you will be the winner so then just and and, and it just has to be one person who is brave enough to Can somebody, can we have a volunteer or should I just go in the chat and choose somebody? Sorry, I didn't hear. Can you say again? I'm saying it is called a hot seat. So then one person can volunteer or I can probably just go in the chat and ask somebody if they would want to, to be in the hot seat. There are about six or seven questions that I will ask you. Um, and hopefully uh, you will answer well enough that you will win a prize. You can pick me. <laughs> this is Sister Sasha. Yeah. All right. So here we go. You are in the hot seat. First question. Who was the first bishop of the Berean Church of God? What? <laughs> Before I finish. <laughs> I mean, I know the history. <laughs> <laughs> what did not finish yet, Sasha? We still have some more. So we get answer. answer first question. <laughs> Chase E. Robinson. Chas? Chas E. Robinson. <laughs> um, no, that's not the one. Sorry, if me did know, me wouldn't. <laughs> All right. I don't need the history like I'm that. Ask you another one. Okay, go ahead. How many churches comprise the beer and body in Jamaica? Um, I think in. I think the last time I heard was twenty-seven. You warm? Or you 26. have to get the something right. Twenty-six. Mm. Not the answer. <laughs> no, so. All right. Let me try with another one. Name the regions um, that we have here in Jamaica, and who are the overseers? Who is the overseer of each region? So now you have central. Yes. Um, I think that is um, Bishop Carter. Um, I know you have south, the south region. My love, I don't <laughs> know what the overseer. <laughs> I don't retain them so can we help her <laughs> fine all right sister i hear you if you want to go ahead she said no she's not her <laughs> um no don't no, go ahead okay for the south region it's reverend david hackett that one i know um, <laughs> can you hear me? why that sound like the wrong Somebody else is, is saying something. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Diana. So you have um, Pastor Cuddle Smith for Central and you have Pastor Brooks for the Eastern Zone. All right. So what do we do? We give, we, you, you're willing to help Sasha with this? Yeah, just as All right. So Sasha, you're gone one. All right. Who are the female pastors in, in Jamaica? Name them. Are you are you differentiating pastors from bishop? Pastors, whether they hold bishop position, but they, because okay. even the even the pastor, even the bishop, um, pastors. Oh, okay. 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 Right. So we have Bishop Lorraine McDermott. Well, I think she's pastor Lorraine Mitchell. Um. Rosalind Barnett and Muriel Brown. Doing fine. Donna Wright. Right. And Christine Howell. <laughs> All right. All right. Yes. So you're going to know Sasha. You're doing fine. All right. Let's go again. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no man, okay. Sasha. Go on, go. Yeah, man, excellent. You go, Sasha. <laughs> All right, Sasha. Who 
who was the speaker Daddy. at the International Mommy. Conference in August? And what was the theme? Sorry, Dana, the 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 I'm saying, who was the speaker at the Women's Conference, um, the International Women's Conference in August, that one day? And what was the theme? Um, um I wasn't there. Um, let me give you a hint, Sasha. Um, it her name starts with K. Kerry. What else? Aiden. Yes, Kerry Hayden. What was the theme? What is the theme of that conference? Um, crushed but not destroyed. Crushed but not destroyed. That's you're doing well, man. You're gone. How many now? I'm still nervous here. All right, this one is so easy, so you won't have to worry. Um, how often do we have international convention? And when is the next one due to happen? Um, every August. How often? How often? Not uh, every August. And they said international. Yes, the international. Yeah, so not every year in August. And so the next one is next year, August 2023. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, every year, every two years. Make up your mind. I'm sticking with the year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no. If you had if you had gone back to the other one, the, the second every one, two every two years. All right. So when is it due to happen again then? So whatever, 2024, then. 2024, 2024. All right, then. So, Sash, out of the six questions, you answered, how should we say it now? Four. International, you know. Yeah, man, it's the international. <laughs> yes, but um, sorry to interrupt you. You did not specify Jamaica. So when she said international convention, international convention actually happens every year. But it happens yeah, every other year in Jamaica. But All right, then. Jamaica. No, All right, Miss Marley. We have international I stand corrected. I stand corrected. I should have said because it comes to Jamaica every two years. Every yeah, two years. Yeah, you never said that. Yeah, you never mentioned that. You just All said right, it. So, but me still give you it because me did still give you so she won the prize, you know. Oh gosh, she'll get it, so she'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, did I'm I'm sure you did very well because you answered, I think it was what four or five out of the how many seven questions. Very good. So, Sash, you have won for yourself um credit um of five hundred dollars for the next choice. Bless the Lord. God, I'm Thank you so much. You. Over to you, Ariel. Over to you, host. Sister Sasha, Sister Sasha, I love, I love you, man. <laughs> I love the determination. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we want to just change the momentum. We're going to sing a song at this moment. I want you to clap your hands. Hey. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. For he is good. Oh, you know what? Let me, let me wheel back a bit. You see, Bria Nights, we are vibrant people. You don't have to turn on your mics. 
but I want you to turn on your cameras. So we are a community and we are in each other's living room. So I want everybody, if you can, if you're in a um, proper space, I want you to turn on your cameras. I'm going to start in one, mm, two, mm, mm, three, four. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Boy, I'm not seeing everybody. Worthy, worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. I see Sister Hackett. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. <laughs> For he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Reed, for that hot seat. I know Sister Sasha's chair is on fire at this moment. It burn up. Her bomb is on fire. <laughs> okay. And now we will go into the information segment, the moment that we have all been waiting for. And this is time for our speaker tonight to come in. And now I will introduce tonight speaker okay just a second okay so miss wallace has been an educator for over 10 years during which she has been facilitating and nurturing the minds of the youths of tomorrow in her role as a teacher at the Enid Bennett High School, formerly Bogwalk High School, she has been proven to be a professional and a reliable and efficient team player with an excellent communication skills and reliability. Miss Wallace desires to strive in becoming an excellent motivational speaker and a life coach as she is passionate about helping the emotional and seeking those who see who seem to be in need of guidance in order to enhance their life holistically. Miss Wallace is a firm believer when it when it comes to assisting individuals and organizations in becoming the better version of themselves. In doing so, she wishes to empower others to take on ownership and become self-directed and spiritually alert in doing same. She holds a bachelor's degree in guidance and counseling. Her training in the field of guidance and counseling at the Jamaica Theological Ser Seminary, her training in the field of, sorry, I mixed up, sorry, in the field of guidance course, Guidance, counselor, guidance and counseling, which is being led by the Holy Spirit. She wishes to navigate the word of God and to encourage others to become the true ambassadors for the kingdom of God. Lastly, she is currently training in the area of evangelism at the Berean Church of God in Princess Field, Lynn State. She is married to Karen Wallace with two children, Leomel and Grace Ann Wallace. Ms. Wallace continues to serve in different capacities, both online and face-to-face -face in workshop, evangelism, motivational sessions, seminars, and other forums. Her heart's desire is to work in partnership with the Holy Spirit in order to reach and unreach to teach to unteach. So, so, Together, I wish to use this moment to welcome our speaker, Minister Julian Mac Morris Wallace. Please make her welcome. Good evening, everyone. It is so good. good. Oh, we are doing. Oh, we're doing. 
All right, it's so good to be here. You're hearing me clearly, everyone? Yes, we are. Yes. Yes. We are. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And I want to say a big, 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 great evening. So it's no longer a good evening. It's a great evening. You know why it's a great evening? Because our God is a great God. He's an awesome God, a God of wonder, a God of wonders. Let me put on the S, come on. He is just an awesome God tonight. And I am truly humbled to be um, given this opportunity to, to speak with us and we hope to speak together. Amen, everyone. Hallelujah. So before we go in, uh, we want we want to just thank the Lord for what he has been doing already and what he's about to do. So I'm going to pray. Father, in Jesus name, we approach your throne. We give your honor. We give your glory. Nothing good that we have done to deserve your grace we thank you oh god that the law came through moses but um um, grace and truth come to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so we approach your throne, oh God, and we just want to congratulate you. We want to thank you for every person that is on this platform tonight. We want to thank you for all that you are doing and all that you are about to do. Father, we pray, God, that even as you allow me to speak with others, oh God, I pray pray for a listening air. Father, I pray for the grace for men to listen to me as I speak tonight. Father, I pray, God, that the Holy Spirit will take full preeminence, that he will guide, that he will lead, that he will get the glory at the end of this session. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll minister to broken hearts. And even those whose hearts are not broken, I pray, God, that you'll prepare them because come a day, mighty God, we know not what may happen. Father, and even those that are not broken in this moment, I pray, God, that they will listen so that they can minister to others. Father, we give you the honor and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we say, amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And I'm so happy to be on this platform. I just want to tell persons, um, I see some of my colleagues, thank you so much for being on this platform tonight. Big up yourself. Enid Bennett High School, a big up yourself. And so... Tonight, we want to go right into uh, our topic. I'm going to ask that it be shared, or if you're ready for me. If not, I can try sharing. Should I try, Sister Reed, or wait for it to be shared? So while Sister Reed make up her mind. I'm turning over to the technicians. Technicians. All right, technicians. All right, so go ahead, go ahead, Sister Wallace. You can share. I am. I am not able to, you have to um, permit me to share. But if not, you can go ahead and share. I'm good with that. All right. So um, tonight, though, while I wait, we want to talk a little bit about grief and trauma. Grief and trauma. And so it is grieving is common to all men. Grieving is common to what? All men. Whether you are a boy or a girl, a man, or a woman, whether you're young or you're old, it is common to all men, all right? And so you have to know that grieving is a way we used to uh, deal with what is happening on the inside. It's an emotional response to what we're going through. It is an emotional response to what has happened to us. And I want you to know that People grieve for a lot of different reasons. We don't just grieve because we have lost a loved one. We don't just grieve because um, somebody gets divorced. We don't, we grieve because maybe you have a pet and the pet dies. You have a dog that you grew up with and that dog accidentally got it down. Like I had a dog, Ripple, and, and, and Ripple was chasing down woman on the street and you know, a truck just run over Ripple. I mean, even persons who didn't know Ripple was like grieving for Ripple. Mark you, they weren't crying with the eye water coming down like, you know, and nose knot and all of those stuff. I hope you get what I'm saying. But they, you saw that they were sad and he's just a dog. And I, I, I don't want to say it's just a dog because he had become a part of our family. You know, when we had to give away our dog, we had a pit bull and 
when we had to give him away, we, we missed him. And so there's a form of emotional expression that we had when we lost our companion and we felt sad. And so I want you to know that people grieve for different reasons and do not allow anybody to tell you not to grieve. Grieving is a natural process of what you are going through. Going further, people suffer from trauma. People have people who have been killed and that trauma that they go through, it causes a psychological impact on them. It causes a psychological impact on them. All right, I see. Oh Lord, I'm trying to see where I can share. Let me go up here. Oh. Advance. All right, so while I try to, Set portion screen. No, that's not what I want. All right, so let me take this down here. Okay, I am seeing it. Yay. All right, are you seeing my screen? Please say yes, it. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Praise the Lord. All right, excellent. So I can actually speak from the screen at this time. And so trauma, I was on the part of trauma. There are persons who go through trauma. Different, there are different types of trauma. There are different types of grieving. Um, you can go for an interview and you might not get the job. And you felt as if you were cheated people grieve because of things like that. And I will not even try to use the word simple, things like that, people grieve for different reasons. All right, so like I said, that grieving is a normal and a natural internal reaction to something that you have lost or some other form of loss. It's a conflicting feeling that you go through. It's, it's, it's a tormenting feeling that you experience um, on the inside. And, and based on what you feel on the inside, you are going to have reactions that, that people will see what you're actually going through. Trauma, you hear people talk about they feel traumatized. It, it's, it's, it's a little bit, for me, it's a little bit more intense, if I may use the word. A little bit more intense is a distress feeling you hear about David feeling distress in the Bible talk about trauma he has been through it and some of us has been through traumatic experiences do you know that there are people who who grieve because they have lost trust in their partner did you know that people who have for years you have been building trust in a relationship and, and, and suddenly something happened and you lose that trust. You begin grieving, you cry over it, you depress over it. And you're gonna see as we go along that there are different stages of depression. People get depressed for different reasons. Mark you, there's a psychological aspect to, distress, um, to depression. And there's also a spiritual aspect to this depression. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later because we are children of God and we're not just, we're, we're also spiritual beings. And so we don't want to look at the thing one-sided, but we want to look at it holistically and speak from that perspective. Somebody say amen. I'll put amen in the chat. <laughs> Praise God. All right. And amen. so, right. So I want you to do a little reflection for me as we move into this discussion. And like I said, discussion. So I'm hoping that I'll get people really stopping me to say something to me or adding to it. That's fine with me. All right. So in life, think about, I want everybody to put on their thinking cap now. I want you to reflect on something that you have lost. Something that has happened to you. I am not asking you to reflect because I want you to experience the pain. But let me say to you, if you still experience a level of pain by reflecting now, it means that you have not fully healed. 
it means that the process of grieving may still be in operation in your life and it can be dealt with. And so I want you to reflect on something that you have lost, whether it was a job, we have just come through the pandemic and it is still going on. Them say COVID still a keep. Some person lost lives, their loved ones. You know, I know people who lost their loved ones, their husbands, their wives, their fathers, children. Yes, yes, yes. I know um, people who lost business during pan the pandemic. You know, they have invested all they had. And when you look at it, the government said that for safety, everything had to be shut down. What have you lost in your life? How did you feel? Right? I wanted to internalize it. How did you felt when you experienced that loss? Ah, oh, I remember when I was going to high school, I was not yet a Christian and I had a boyfriend. Yes, 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 I had a boyfriend and that boyfriend cheated on me. His name is not worthy to be mentioned now, but I pray for his soul salvation. And he cheated on me. And, and, and I remember not, um, I was not a Christian, but I believed in God and I would always pray. But because I was going through a loss what have I lost I lost the relationship I cared about I have spent years building my life around that relationship and so when I found out that he cheated my entire world came crumbling down I don't know if you have ever been through any serious loss and you may be saying you're a young girl man look at heartbreak not too bad but me tell you I cried bitterly i cried what bitterly because of oh i felt of the time i invested in the relationship and so i know what loss is i i, I buried my father a couple of years ago i know what loss is how did you feel when you went through that traumatic experience how did you feel how are you feeling now do you feel that you have come far enough to be able to tell somebody about it without crying? These are all rhetorical questions. I want you to think about it. Yeah, you have been in that relationship and you find that it's not working. Is divorce really the answer? Is divorce really the answer? Do you really want a broken home? No, 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 I'm not encouraging you to take beaten, but I'm saying, can it be worked out? Can you go to counseling? Yes, divorce is a loss. That spouse that you lost, that friend that you lost, that friend that, that, that cheated on you, who, who, who has now caused mistrust in your relationship. How are you feeling about it? You didn't get the job because they claim that there are no jobs in the pandemic. How, did you, how do you feel that you were rejected? How do you feel now that you look on it? The rumor that they talk about you, they spread on you. Nobody not even did ask you if it was true. How are you feeling about it? Are you strong enough to be able to talk to somebody and don't cry? I remember when I was younger and they, they spread a rumor on me. I know me just stop, stop ball because I was only 11, 12 and nobody believed me. And so I know me stop ball. And if you're, if you're, if you're careful, me shed a little tears. It's not that I'm seeking pity. The wound was too deep for me to bear by myself. What am I saying? Everybody will experience some loss at some point. But can I assure you that there is help? Somebody type in the, shot, the chat. There is help for the helpless. There is help for the hopeless. The Bible tells us that when Jesus was ascending into heaven, he spoke and he said, I will send you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. And he is able to comfort you and I. Whatever loss you might have, I want you to just hold that one point until we finish going through this PowerPoint and know that the Holy Spirit is your comforter. Can I get an amen? Amen. So individual, <laughs> individuals, we express um, grief and trauma in different ways. You have people who experience traumatic experiences and start walk naked. It's like them very head eat. Something go wrong in them psyche. Them start, them start pose naked on Facebook. All of a sudden, something is wrong. 
something is definitely, definitely wrong. And so grief is a natural and a adaptive reaction to lost. Whatever you have lost, whatever you think you should have gotten and you didn't get it, you were cheated out of that job. Yes, yes, yes. You were cheated out of that relationship. Are you the man should have been married? Yes. Whatever it is, whatever it is, a loss is a loss. Pain is pain. Somebody say pain is pain. So nobody pain. should tell you. <laughs> nobody should tell you. Say, Lord, man, and that you're ball over. You know, you have some people who are like that. You are experiencing your own loss. And they might ask, say, Lord, man, and that you're ball over. People ball over the message, nemesis. Look here. Your pain is your pain. Don't let anybody tell you so you don't have no right to ball over your pain. But when you don't ball, dry your tears and move on. Just stay in it. Just stay. But there are, there, let me tell you, there are functions to grief. Let, let's look at the monitor. To accept the reality, one of the functions is it helps us to, um, to accept the reality of the loss. Some people will not accept it, say the person has died. Some people will not accept it that, look here, the relationship has ended and it's time to move on. They keep on texting you. They keep on saying, hey, let us go and have lunch. Yes, it's free, but me not that greedy. I don't that desperate. What am I saying? Every There's function to you grieving and it's a process. It helps you, it, it helps you in the process of um, that pain that you feel to understand where you are and to know that, yes, I am feeling this pain in my heart, but one day it will end. It make it possible for the person, it make it possible for the bereaved person to become attached to other people. There's time when people are grieving and then just lock themselves away. They don't want to talk to anybody else. They just keep on thinking about the person. I am not saying anything is wrong with thinking about the person or the thing, but when we treasure it above other relationship, then that can become a problem. It can become a problem. And we're gonna be talking about that a little bit more. Now, there are different signs of grief and trauma. As you see it on the board, we're not gonna deal with all of them because of time's sake, but everybody knows the crying. Crying at the first one. We bala ala tila knows not a comma, we are wiping. You know what they kind of ball in the misread? Yes, man. Then them ball in the yard, jump on the ground, all faint. And you don't really faint, you know. But you know, say so something I go on, you need help. You, you, you're showing people that look here, I can't manage this by myself. All right, some of we probably don't, don't cry like that, but we, we, we cry in our hearts. We feel the tears running down our hearts. Anybody ever experienced that? Yes, man. You feel like a literal artist crying like water yeah, running down your heart. I have experienced it before. You have difficulty sleeping. You have no motivation. You even feel guilty that the person died. You're thinking that a mission are dead instead. Why it never happened to me? I remember as a child, I was about 14 and my cousin lost his eye. And I was on the ground, a ball and a ball and I said, God, take from my eye and uh, take my eye and give him eye, Lord. God, imagine if he did take my eye. But I tell him, I put on some good, good ball in. I mean, I said, no, but that was a part of me grieving for my cousin. He lost the eye and eye and that was grieving. You feel longing for the person. You long for the person. You miss the person. You miss the relationship that you once had. You miss the job because you were fired from the job. You, you know, you know, you miss your colleague. Whatever it is that you may be going through, you miss it. You ask numerous questions. You ask questions, why I'm dead? Why I'm, why I'm dead? No, oh, you can't. All kind of questions you ask. You become withdrawn, even if it's not death. It can be a divorce. It can be the loss of a job, a loss of a relationship, the loss of a child, anything else. Once it is called loss, you will grieve over it. You, you will feel sad. You will express some form of emotion. People that struggle with um, traumatic experiences, they have flashbacks. They have flashbacks. They just lie down and, and see the thing happening all over. Struggle with low self-esteem. You're always angry, misplaced anger. 
Somebody says something to you and they say it nicely, but the way you feel because you're grieving, you answer them in a particular way. Oh my God. They didn't deserve it. That is what we call misplaced anger. They don't deserve it. But if the person understands that you are grieving, then they can have compassion on you. For children, for children, because I teach for children, I know this. The children that are grieving, some of them can become bully. You never know that. Mm -hmm. Some of them can exhibit attitude of bullying or they can become withdrawn or they can become clo um, the clone of the class. You know that one child will always I try to give joke and mash up your teaching. Yes, yes, yes. And so we have to know that the pain is real. You feel all kind of pain in your heart, all in your stomach. You feel pain all over your body because you're grieving. It's like you become paranoid. You want to call the person every minute that cheated on you and, 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 and you want to make sure that you, you know where he is. You want to call the person that is divorcing you and to say that, listen me, um, can we work this out even when they're saying no, then there's still a future with you. And so you will grieve over these stuff. So there are different types of grieving, a lot of them, a lot of them. So you have normal grieving. You have, I just going to pick two out of that. You have the anticipatory grief where you know that the person is ill. For example, you know that the person has cancer and you're expecting, you know that the person is going to die. And so that you think that you have the ability to deal with it. So, so you anticipate it, but the truth of the fact, after the person has died, you recognize that you can't manage. All right, you have the delay grief. You don't cry when the person died. You don't cry when the person left. You don't cry any at all. And so all of them something me are gonna need counseling. <laughs> uh, eventually you're going, you're going to break down. You're going to break down all of these type of grief and you have a lot of them you have the mass griefing you have you have a traumatic one you have the complicated one you see the complicated grieving guys you need people definitely need help for this one it, it's above your head it's above your, it's like you can't get through it all by yourself you need somebody to talk with and so people who suffer major loss they go through at least researchers tell us and there's no one 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 um one particular set of stage of people who include different ones but i want you to know we want to look at these five stages of grieving and the first stage is your in your den denial you can't believe i remember when my father died you know and i was i came from overseas and when I when they told me, I said, what? No, sir. I was in pure denial. It's like me, I said, no, but I left him here. Uh, you couldn't have dead. You couldn't have dead. I must something else. And and for me, I didn't start crying. I am saying, remember, say, may I come look for him tomorrow, Monday, because I came back the Sunday. And I'm saying, may I come look for him tomorrow, man. Said, no, man, you couldn't have dead. I'm coming. But the truth of the fact, he died. And this stage may last a few days or longer. There's no one rule to grieving. People can grieve for years. But when you are grieving for years, it's dangerous. It's not healthy. Somebody say it's not healthy. It's not good at all. Not nobody, healthy. nobody. God doesn't want you. God will allow you to grieve. You remember when Moses died? <laughs> and they were ball and they were gone. And, and then God said, all right, come now, Joshua, Moses, my son, my servant is dead. Come now. Because what God had done was to give them time to grieve. And it's the same thing. God has given us time to grieve. Yes, man, Baal. And you're going to realize in this process, I'll God get it to. I'll God get it to. <laughs> I'll God get piece of it. So when you're in that you're in denial, you you it's like you you pretend like the person don't die. What you heard is a lie. No no no, it's not adding up. What you're talking about? My father, my sister, my uncle. No, sir, the dog when me just left, I eat one back. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Or, or or no, sir. 
So you are struggling in that stage and that shouldn't last for too long. And then you move on to the anger stage. Hey, Rampo Jamaicans, this has them born with anger. And when we go for sure anger, a different type of anger, which you know, only Jesus can help with. That's why the Bible encourages us to be angry, but do not what? Don't sin. Because when we're going through this process, it, when we jump to stage two, we, we're so angry. We're so angry during this stage. Persons are critical. They're, they are very angry. We tend to blame the doctor. I remember when my father died, my cousin overseas, she was like, no, she, she blamed the doctor totally. No, oh, the, oh, we're supposed to dead. The doctor never knows. Say, and oh, she, have a, she had a lot of questions. We find people to blame. We're angry. We snap at people. We, we're just so angry. Why me? Why my loved one? You, know, you understand? Why him dead instead? Why couldn't be me? You understand? And we express anger in, in a very bad way sometimes. And then you can move on to the bargaining stage where you're going to say, um, Instead of that person, let it be me. You know, say, are you you're gonna say, um, why is it, why is it it happen? Um, um, Lord, if you bring that person back, if you bring that person back, I promise I'll do better. If you bring that child back, I promise I'll take better care. If you bring my husband back, if you bring, if you get me that job that I lost, get me back, get the boss to rehire me. I promise I'm going to do better. I promise that I, I'm going to behave myself. I promise it's not like a bargain. You're bargaining with God. You're bargaining with yourself. At that stage, you become so helpless. You literally feel helpless. So any, anything you can want, and you know that in this stage, you, you know that you're bargaining with the higher being. So whether it is Jesus Christ or belong, you believe in or Buddha, you try to make some form of communication by talking to this person, running right along because of time. This stage, <laughs> depression, a lot of people get stuck in this stage. A lot of people get stuck in this stage. I'm going to tell you that depression is common among men. David said, why is my soul cast down within me? Why is it that my soul is quieted within me? What happened to me? You're going through a depression. And you, it, it's a psychological effect. It's a psychological impact on your mind and on your soul. And it is okay to feel depressed. It is okay in this sense to feel withdrawn. Because when you're by yourself, you're going to get quiet. So after the anger kind of kind of simmer down, you now start feeling that level of depression. You're not talk much again. Because remember, in the stage of anger, you used to cuss and be a very terrible and be, blame the doctor. You bargain with God. And then when you reach this stage, a lot of people get stuck right here. A lot of people never move from this stage. If God himself does not deliver some people, they remain in this stage for years. Even five years later, after the person has been buried, five years later, even after they get a new job, they still feel stuck. It's like they can't find a way to be happy. They wonder if I will ever be happy again. You just keep on, keep on, keep on feeling sad. This feeling of sadness, you start crying again. You start crying again. You start crying back over the same thing where you cried three months over. Two years ago, you cried and you cried two years later. You, it's like you're stuck in this process. And then, then there's the final stage of what you call acceptance. The depression stage will leave this person somewhat there are times when they will accept it and then you just gone back there are times when they regress what you call is regression you regress you go back to the stage you get angry again regressing regressing and i want to tell you that all of these stages it is acceptable yes it is acceptable but what am i saying we don't want people to stay there forever 
Yes, we know that you miss the person. We know that you miss the job. We know that whatever you're feeling on the inside, it has impacted your life. And believe me, grief and trauma will change your life. It will change your mindset. It will change your outlook. Don't ever believe that you will be the same again. You can either be worse or better. But I tell you, as children of God, we declare that anything that we will go through, God will cause us to be better, not bitter. The road that I am on should not make me bitter. There was a time when I was bitter, but no, because I know that there is a God, I should become better. Somebody say amen. So in this stage, we start, we start facing the reality. And now is the part where we want to talk about with knowing all of that information about grief, how, how people grieve. And you now know that what you went through, it was normal. Yeah, it was normal. Though that person said to you, I remember, <laughs> funny, I remember when my sister, I think she's on this platform. I remember when my sister got pregnant. I don't know if sister you remember because she helped me to get her in Bog Walk at the time. And she was a teenager. And when she got pregnant, she up to stay with me. And when we went to do that pregnancy test, I was depressed for three months. You would think that somebody had died. I just could not get through it. I could not get through the fact that my little sister is now pregnant. I went through the, the process. I remember blaming myself. I, I remember saying if I probably had not moved away, I would be able to watch her a little bit more, but you can't watch them for true. Not in this day and time, it's true, Sasha. <laughs> you, you, but I'm telling you, I grieve. I grieve for three months. I cried. There are times when she would be at my home, she and I alone, and I would lock in the bathroom and just a ball, a ball and think that somebody died. It's like I could not get through it, but I had people who was there for me, people who counseled me. And, and I didn't know how to rediscover myself, even though it wasn't somebody that died. But when my father died, I had to learn how to rediscover myself. And in rediscovering yourself, I'm not even gonna go through all of these slides. I want you to know that even in when you when you talk about rediscovering yourself with everything that you have been through and yes you might say it's not fear yes you have cried yes you missed the person yes it still hurts but with everything that you have been through you still have to live you have people who said that when my spouse die i die too they just forget to bury me <laughs> They, they prefer to die with that person. They don't see themselves living separate lives because all your life, you have been building a foundation. Are you alone? I figure care of your children, them know. Your mother died, you are used to coming home to your mother. You're used to coming home to your father. Yes, you might have not lost a parent or a child, but I want you to know that any grief is grieving. Any trauma is trauma. It affects us psychologically. It affects us verbally. It affects how we deal with people. And I want you to know that in rediscovering yourself, I want you to know that discovery has to do with our identity. Mm -hmm. Our identity. Because you have put so much in this business. You have put so much in this person. You have put so much in this organization, this child, this, this job, this study, your failure subjects, your grief over that too, you know? Yeah, you the past the CXC. Oh my God, imagine when you carry on a piece of paper or when you open it on your computer, everybody going to say, but the girl walk list, the boy walk list. You can imagine what they're going to say about you. And when you start thinking about the backlashes, you say, oh my God, might as well be dead. But I want you to know that even in your process of grieving, you and I can rediscover who we are. We can rediscover who we are 
by checking on the word of God, looking back on what God say about you. I know that it is painful. I know that you will miss this person, but you have to rediscover. You have to recognize that you are still alive and you still have gifts, you still have talent, you still have life in you, you still have a purpose. You still have to recognize who you are. Yes, who you were before you had the loss. It's probably broken. Your, 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 your dreams are shattered. Yes, yes, your dreams have become shattered. Things look like it now work out, but you can rediscover yourself by doing certain things. And we're going to go through them very, very quickly. Try to be kind to yourself. When you begin to rediscover who you are, when you begin to um, find out who you are, when you begin to investigate, I'm using different verbs, when you begin to actualize or to see or research, and try to understand who is this person that is looking in the mirror. You're gonna see this brilliant person. Yes, you have been broken. Yes, your heart has been shattered. Yes, you are cast down. Yes, yes, I understand. But I want you to know that you are still alive on the inside and the person would want you to go on. The person would want you to live on. I want you to be kind to yourself. Look in the mirror and speak kindly to yourself. What about yourself that you love? Oh, I love my eyes. I love my personality. Yes, yes, yes. What would the person I'd love about you? Yes, Jimmy would have loved this about me. Yeah, remember him in a good way. Remember her in a good way. Be kind to yourself. Find something that you love in rediscovering yourself. Even if you never used to read, find a new hobby, man. What can I do? What can I do to occupy myself? What do I need to do? What did I like doing when I was younger? What do I like doing now that I'm still young? Do I like reading? Do I like praying? Do I like um, music? Will I listen to some music? In rediscovering yourself, you're finding out what did I really like? What was my passion? What was my goal? What was my aim in life? But you're not trying to forget the person that have, you have lost, but you remember them with happy memories. Running right, right along. You think about the relationship. Talk to other people. Talk to other people. Find a group. Find a group that will support you. But in finding a group, be careful who you bring in your circle. Yes. Be careful who you um, allow to give you guidance. Look at this fish, everyone. This is a fish that is in an aquarium. I want you to know that people that are grieving sometimes feel alone like this fish. They feel all by themselves. You're just moving around helplessly, unmotivated. I want you to know that a goldfish must be fed. Am I correct, Sister Reed? A goldfish in an aquarium must be fed, else he got dead for hungry. Straight up talk. This is to say, that while you're in your situation and going through your process, be careful of who feed you. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Where? Don't miss it. <laughs> I want to take my time right here. Because when we're grieving, sometimes we also have a pack of people. When we're grieving, people are going to come and just want to volunteer to be kind. In this time, people naturally want to be kind to people. Yeah? Can I, can I help you with your children? Can I take them to school for you? Um, you may fail a subject and uh, your neighbor's son next door is going to say, I do maths very well. Yeah. I can, you can come over when my mom is not there. You can come over when nobody is there. I can teach you maths, but that multiply, that multiplication shouldn't go on because sometimes because you're grieving, you end up doing things that you regret later. And so as, a, as an individual, you may feel like a fish by yourself in an aquarium, 
somebody might come and say to you, Lord, man, take off the pants here. Every day you wear the same black pants and the black blouse. What you can choose to do is say, you are not a feeder. I don't want to talk to you. But when somebody come and they say the same thing to you, to you and how they say to you, come here, Sister Reed. I noticed that you have been wearing that same clothes every day. I know that it's because you have been grieving. I know that it's because you're depressed. Can I recommend that you change your outfit? A matter of fact, me have two new blows in my suitcase. So I did have a long time, but they still look good. Can I give it to you? No, Sister Reed, you're a feeder. So I'll invite you to feed me. So what am I saying? When you're going through your distress and your trauma, do you, you have to know what to sieve out and what to take in. Because in that time, you can become confused. In times like that, you don't know what to do. You're, you're, you're hearing too many voices. You're, 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 your mind becomes so crowded because everybody has an opinion. Everybody wants to tell you how to grow your children now. Everybody wants to tell you which course to study. Everybody wants to tell you, no, man, don't go to that school. Don't go to that college. Because there are so many voices. And what you need to learn to do in this time is to decide who you will let in and who you will let out. This is very important. And this is important in discovering, rediscovering who you are. So in connecting to people, connect to the right people. There is one person who shared with me that during the time of her grieving, and this is a real example now, no makeup story when I come with. You know, sometimes some clients have some makeup story, but this is not makeup this time. And this person, she lost a loved one and she continued to grieve. And they introduced her now to a, a partner somebody to give her comfort, somebody to be her friend. And it happened that the, after the burial, she had a lot of money left. But this person that they introduced her to was a genuine. You want to tell me that this person used up all her assets and has left her with nothing. Now tell me now, during the time of grieving, you have to be careful. Don't run into any relationship. Yes, you are going through that divorce. You're going through that um, separation. No, no, it's not the time to go look one man or one woman. No, no, it's not the time to, to, to say you need comfort in your bed. No, it's the time as Christians to run to the Lord. No, it's the time to run to the Lord. In rediscovering yourself, you will go through different things, different emotional trauma. But I want you to take time with yourself. Somebody said take time with yourself. Come on, man, take time with yourself. Yes, yes. You, you, <laughs> you failed that subject. Yes, you should have done better. You could have done better. But there's always a second chance. There's a third chance and there's a fourth chance. Some of us have one one subject we do for five years until we get to five. <laughs> but nothing wrong with that. This is just your journey. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's journey is unique. It's like we're acting a movie. And if all of the movie have the same script, the movie are go boring. You're not going to sit down for watch at the movie. Watch it already. Come on, man. But in all of this, remember that God will never leave you. Remember, God will never forsake you. I remember, I remember some people, you know, when they're rediscovering themselves, they recognize that their hearts have been broken. They recognize that their hearts are still shattered. Give yourself time to heal. Don't let anybody tell you, say, you should not heal already. No, everybody heal differently. Everybody grieve differently. And while you're healing, you're discovering that I don't like this. I don't like that about certain people. I don't like this about myself. What is it that I'm going to do to be better and to do better? So you're keeping an opinion on yourself, but you're doing it this time differently. You will never be the same. Don't let anybody tell you that after a trauma or a grief or a loss or something, you will never be the same. 
you will attempt life with superior knowledge. Somebody says superior knowledge because you're not restarting where you've begun. You're starting this time with knowledge you never had. You're, start, you're restarting this time with knowledge you never had. And this makes you a better person. You can choose to do what is right. You know, there's some persons that, whose hearts are so broken. Their hearts are so shattered. They, they live in darkness. They live in darkness. When you're rediscovering yourself, you have to come out of the darkness. You have to come out of the slumber. You have to approach the light. I remember when my father died and my heart was so broken. It felt as if I died too. But there was this song that I listened to. I matter of fact, the Holy Spirit gave me the song before I, he died. Can I tell you that before my father died, and this is just my personal experience, he was around the back with me and I was taking a picture of him. And I heard a voice said to me, you can put this in the program. Yeah. And I believe that God was preparing me but I was never ready. And I, when I was overseas, I, 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 I kept listening to this song and there was this song, it speaks about a woman. Her heart was sick, literally sick. She had to do a surgery, listen carefully. And I'm gonna wrap up very soon. And she had to do a surgery. She had to do an open heart surgery. And after the doctor finished, fixing the heart and doing what he needed to do, he closed back her chest. But the woman would not wake up from the coma. The woman was still in deep sleep and they tried getting her out and to come back because no, her heart was fixed. And they recognized that this woman's heart is fixed, but she's still not waking up. And the doctor went over to the woman and the doctor said to her, Mrs. Jones, your heart is now fixed. Mrs. Jones, because she was still deeply asleep. And he was saying, Mrs. Jones, tell your heart to beat again. Because her heart would, would not beat as it should. And he was saying, Mrs. Jones, he was speaking in her earring, even though she lied there fast asleep, whether she was in a coma, whatever it was, but they could not get her up. And he kept saying, Mrs. Jones, your heart is fixed. Everything is attached perfectly. Mrs. Jones, tell your heart to beat again. And suddenly, somebody says suddenly, Mrs. Jones' heart started beating. I want you to know that you can live again. Somebody who has had their heart shattered, Tell your heart to beat again. Tell your heart you can live again. Tell your heart that you're ready to rediscover who you are in God. Tell your heart that you're ready to study scriptures, that you're ready to become like God in the earth. Tell your heart that you're ready to live. It doesn't matter what you have been through. Tell your heart that I am ready. You need to get a routine. What is your routine? Kind of change up a routine. You're used to doing certain things with that spouse or with that person. Know that. Know that when you remember that person, you might feel down. But try and remember that person or that thing in a positive way. Yeah. We used to sit and listen to this music together. Lord, I thank you that I had this opportunity. Find a way to give God praise through this. And you recognize that when you start praising God, when you start praising God, something about the very atmosphere around you begin to change. When you start honoring God for the life of that person that he has placed in your life. And yes, yes, that person has left you, but he has left you to live on. And the fact that you have lived from then to now, it means that you are able to manage and you will manage. But we can't do this by ourselves. We need God. Breathe. Breathe. Take fresh breeze. Walk out. Um, find something cheerful to do. Rediscover. Find something that you like to do. 
help if you like to help people if you're a helper if you like intercession whatever you like to do take up a new course you like baking from long time but because a person was sick or because you never have the time you never get a chance go and learn to bake start a new business yes that business crumble and you're grieving over it go back to the drawing board come up with strategy rediscover you might find that you have greater strength in our another area and you said you know so my strength is in marketing let me try a little bit of marketing whatever your strength is capitalize on it somebody tell your heart to beat again live take fresh bath some people when they go through grief they know not even want beard live beard change your clothes put on a little makeup well if your church allow it of course <laughs> you know put on put on a little lip gloss then don't make your lip look so dry you're something go and go get a little foot shall and shall go get your ear done if you don't want to cream your ear put on a little wig pretty up yourself laugh again go out in group no 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 i'm not saying to forget that person i'm saying to that that memory that that you remember that is a good memory you're gonna say he would have wanted me to live he would have wanted me to rediscover who i am he would have wanted me to get involved in lives and society again he would have wanted me to be stronger this that i've been through there is one person that i can help to get through this you did not go through this for nothing you did not go through this so that you can keep it as a secret no 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 you went through this so that the promises of god could take place in your life you went through this that god could use you as an ambassador you can tell somebody that when i was going through if it was not god i would have lost my mind you went through this so you can tell somebody to listen does jesus care does jesus care when my heart aches and you can say yes he cares i know he cares you went through this struggle you went through this depression you went through this whatever this is you know you're this i know my this you went through that traumatic experience and never think him about dead it was suddenly you never get to say a last goodbye you even left here with a pity them all by yourself yes you went through this so that you woman of god mighty woman of god you i'm talking to you you went through this that you can be strength for somebody else because there's somebody that is waiting on you to tell them that i went through this and if i've been through it and if you go through it god will take you to the very end and i'm here to testify somebody say i'm a testimony so you have been through it but you have been through it because god intended to use you <laughs> let me say that again you went through it because god had an intention to use you no it was no mistake that you had gone through that situation it is no mistake yes it might have been untimely but because god is with you and god is for you and god is uh, is able to help you to rediscover and to help you to know who you are in him and whose you are you are able to share that testimony and somebody will look at you and say, oh my God, for you to go through this and come out alive, no man do this unless God be with him. No man come through this that you have been through. I don't know what your this is, but no man go through this unless the God be of heaven be with him. Know that you're rediscovering the strength that you thought you never had. You think you could not have gone through it, but you went through it and you still had your mind. God kept your mind together. You never walk naked. Come on, somebody. You never walk naked. You went through it, but you never walk naked. Nobody never sent you a Bellevue. You went through it. You came through it and you're still going through it. And if you need time to heal again, if you need time to brush up on yourself, take the time, take it because you're getting better. It is okay to say I'm not okay. Today I'm not okay. It does make you weak. It does just make us know that you're human and you are going to make it. Somebody say, I'm going to make it. The Bible declares that blessed are those who mourn. The Bible says we are blessed. Happy are those who mourn. 
for you shall be comforted. Where will this comfort come from? The Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Remember the scripture. And he, the Bible said he will be with us until the day of redemption, until the return of the Christ. He must stay with you and he will comfort you. Yes, you broke down yesterday and you break down today again. He must comfort you today again. And tomorrow you feel down again, he's there again. He's just keep on keeping on. That is the Holy Spirit. He'll never leave you. Come on. He'll never forsake you. The Bible said there's a time to weep. Baal if you must. But don't always stay in that slumber. Get through it. And then when you laugh, laugh. So laugh healthy too. Yes. Laugh. Because there's a time for everything under the sun. The Bible said when you go through the waters, he will be with you. Yes, some of us have been through some waters. And some of us felt like we were going to drown. You remember those waters? Yeah. You felt that this was it. Mm -hmm. Might as well take my last breath and go under. Yes, man. Some people felt like this was it. Mm -mm. There's no tomorrow. I cannot make it. But no, Jesus is saying, when you go through it, whatever this is, I am going to be with you. Yes, he said, cast your cares upon me. Because I, God, care for you. He said, exchange your yoke for my yoke. Exchange your burden. Yes, some of us carry the burden. Some of us focus on the divorce. Look here, man. Give the divorce to God. Give the separation to God, man. Whatever. Give the man to God. Give the woman to God. Give the pit to them to God. Whatever it is, give that loss to God. He said, exchange. Come on. It means that whatever he has, we're going to take it. And whatever we have, we're going to give it to him. And he's a kind, kind God. Amen? Amen. Wrapping up, wrapping up, wrapping up. There are some people, while they're discovering themselves, you have some mean people. And, and, and yes, sometimes people do regress. I hear my sister saying that just the other day, she just start ball again. Mm -hmm. And my father died over two years ago. You think we're going to just say, Lord, man, how long a man dead? Move on, no? No, that's not kind. Some of us are just not kind. Why would a kind man? If you want to say something, say something kind or don't say anything at all. Keep your lips. Sometimes, you know, you don't have to say anything, you know. Just be there. Just sit there with the person. Just, just, just let the person feel your presence. While I am rediscovering who I am, I'm trying to find out my identity. I'm trying to regain my strength. I'm trying to see what I love, what I want to do. I'm trying to rebuild again. And while I'm doing it, I, rem I might remember some stuff that we used to do together. I might start, start crying again. If you have anything, there are a lot of things you can say that are kind, but there are three. I'm really sorry that you have to go through this. I can pray for you. I am just a phone call away. If you need me, you know where to find me. I got you, girl. I got you. God got your back. No matter what you're going through, you can find some kind things to say. Some things not to say. Get over it. Mm -mm. Get over it. I remember I, remember I told you that when, when, when my sister got pregnant, I was grieving because, you know, it was too sad for me at the time. And then I was going to speak to someone about my situation. I just needed somebody to talk to. And while I stood waiting on the person to talk with, somebody just turned to me and said, I'm not going to talk to you, man, boat. Oh, my God. The person just killed me. Literally, I started crying again. It is best for us not to say anything. While I am rediscovering myself, while you are rediscovering who you are and who you will become, because I tell you that there are greatness in you and you're gonna become the best version of yourself. But how can you rediscover yourself? I want you to begin to read what God say about you and apply it to your life. Not only the Bible, you can read some books. You can get books and read. Change your mindset, change your outlook. 
how you look at certain things, get superior knowledge. Let your conversation be seasoned with grace. How you speak, how you relate to persons. I, I, I read about this lady who lost her husband, you know, after a divorce, she married again and then she lost the husband. And, and what she did was to write books. And when she, she wrote books, those books helped others because she wrote what she, she has been through and how it has impacted her life. And now that book is helping others. So see there, the lady not even knows that she was an author. So she is rediscovering who she is. The only way to the end, to end grief is to really go through grief. And know that the Holy Spirit is always with you to the very end. God bless you. Any question for me? <laughs> or back over to Sister Evangelist Reed, if there are no questions. Trust that you were blessed. Just before a question, Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, O oh God, that you are with us and for us and not against us. And so, Father, there are different persons on this platform. Mighty God, I pray, Holy Spirit, that your hand will rest upon them. Father, even if they are not grieving, but they might be going through some challenges. Mighty God, they might have lost their finances, their business, a relationship, a job, whatever they might be going through. Holy Spirit, you know more than I do because you are the omnipresence of God. You are everywhere and you know all things. Holy Spirit, I ask you now that you'll minister by your power, that you'll rest upon them in a special way. Mighty God, begin to turn that situation around. Those who have been depressed, every spirit of depression that is backing this depressed feeling in their lives, I command you to leave their lives, leave their atmosphere. Father, I pray God even now that you will put a song in their spirit that they will begin to worship you. Worship that will change the atmosphere. Worship and praise that will effect changes in and around their lives father i commit every person in this on this platform lord i give you our honor and the glory and i pray god that you just continue to minister to us as women mighty god cause us to rediscover who we are even if we have not had any loss but there's so much in us you said that we were created in your likeness and in your image you have placed your character and you have placed your abilities in us some of us don't see what is in us and so far Father, link us with the correct person, mentors that will guide us into your purpose. Father, I pray, God, that you'll touch the mind, touch the airing, touch the emotion, touch the soul of every person even now. And Father, we declare healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy amen, Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Julie. Over to our moderator. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, speak of life. You're gonna live, oh, my brother, my sister. I speak of life. You are the head and not the tail you will prevail i speak of life you don't give up the fight for your life you shall live and not die shattered but i am not Wounded, but time will, it will heal. And we go load those cross I bear. Long more the nights I trust I did, but yet. Still I arise.
never to give up, never to give in against all odds, yet still I rise high above the clouds. At times I feel low, yet still I. I will rise and I will leave this song with you. You shall indeed rise above all those circumstances in your life. It does not end here. That opportunity that you might have missed, delay is not danger. Sometimes you should delight in the detours that God gives you in your life. You, you're going to overcome. You are going to rediscover yourself. And that is my last tip for you tonight. Have a wonderful evening. I'll leave the enough for even for Sister Evangelist Lee. Love you all. Wow. Enjoy the rest of the week. Before Hallelujah. You, come on. If you can open your cameras, everybody, if you can open your camera, if you can just open your camera and just wave your hand um, in thanksgiving, in praise to God. Indeed, it has been a good evening. Ah, how could how how better could we have, have spent the, the, the evening but really rediscovering ourselves? after grief and trauma i really want to say thank you so much julie beautiful ah thank you. I, I see that hand i see that i see that wave sister donna and 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 everybody Blessing else that honor glory and power to the angel amen. of peace i am encouraged amen 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 yes and so sister julie I really want to say thank you for that, for that stirring, for that lively, you know, for restoring. There are so many persons I'm sure here. We may not talk it, but we're going through and we have gone through, mm? especially with that pandemic. You know, many of us thought we wouldn't have been here. Um, and, and that, but God has been good. And, and that trauma that a number of us have, have been left with anxieties of all sorts and so, but we want to thank you for that presentation to make us feel that what we're going through is it, it, something we're normal. And it's something that we can go through and it's something that we can handle. Thank you so much, Julie. And I also want to say thank you to our, our, our host, beautiful. Thank you so much, young Ariel, beautiful. You know that means that you're going to become resident host because we're going to have to ask you to do this again. Praise My God. <laughs> Bless you. Um, for, to our technicians, Sister Elisha, um, Raven, um, you know, all the, the organizers, the board members, our 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 bishop and assistant bishop was, you know, give us the support, our international women's director who has always um supported us. Um to everybody who come on, I see Sister Millicent. It's so mm -hmm. good sister millie blessings um to everybody who took the time off to come on tonight thank you so very much this um women's health was designed with you in mind and i want to say to you if there's anything that you any topic that you think you'd want us to um to address in this forum feel free to make it known to us thanks everybody now one last thing before we go we, we, you can't miss this. Ladies, you can't miss this one. It's the women's retreat. It goes off on the weekend of November 4 to 6. Um, this time, it, it, um, we're going to an all-inclusive. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that by the, by the, yes, yes. So we're hoping that by, by, by mid, um, between, tomorrow to wednesday we would have tied the agreement no listen this we only are catering because we're catering for at about 30 between 30 to 35 people now listen to me you have to cash in on this it is going to be at holiday in um in montego bay now ladies get on board and and let me tell you you now find this package anywhere else we have asked you to, to just, it's just a minimum of 
$30,000. Don't miss it. It promises we have dynamic speakers. We're going to have fun and we're going to, um, you know, go into, you know, real worship and the word of God. So I'm going to ask you not to miss it. You know what the, the, the theme is? It says, get up, girl. There's more to you than you think. Now, please, ladies, make it a date and um, let us go and let us really have fun together as women and let us pray together. Let us um, do this together. So the week end of November 4 to 6, make it a date. Um, you can make contact with me. You can make contact with any of our board members. There, there are um, Sister Carol, who is in the Southern Zone, Sister Carol and Sister... Um, Sister Ingrid, we have Sister Carleen Holness, who is in the central, and then you have myself and Sister Tracy Fraser, we're in this zone. Make contact with us, all the information, and we'll continue to put the information out to you um, as the weeks go on. But please make sure by the 15th of this month, we would, have, we would, we would be hoping that most people have paid at least half, if not all the payment, so that um, we know exactly who will be in attendance. So that's it for us, um, ladies. Remember now, as you rediscover yourself, be careful who you allow to feed you. Mm? Read up and remember and re-identify yourself who you are in God, because we are ordinary women in the hands of of an extraordinary God. God bless you. Thank you all for making it Health Forum tonight. Blessings. Have a blessed night. Thank you. Yeah, so we can go to this song, everybody.